little note cards to ask you because you are absolutely amazing. Um, and I don't know if I've gotten everything that you do. Um, I'm going to list it off. And if I've missed something that you are or have done, let me know because your list is freaking long and out of this world. No complaints. I want to be like you when I grow up for sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, so sweet. Okay, so you are a paranormal author, paranormal researcher, and investigator, a clairsentient, an ethereal, did I say that right? Yes. Conduit, a motivational lecturer, dark energy healer, a Reiki master, a haunted antiques museum owner. Um, creator of Texas Paracon and owner and CEO of Paraflix and a mother. I think I, I, you don't have that on your website, but I think I've seen pictures. So, I mean, how do you survive and breathe and live doing all of that? You know, it's really one small step at a time. And I, I do a lot of meditation and grounding and yoga um, and I know that that may seem like, well, how do you fit that into? I, I honestly, I think that just staying recharged and refueled and balanced and focused in that way really allows for me to kind of time block my schedule. And, you know, if I do not, uh, accomplish something that I, that I may have had on my to-do list in, um, a specific day, then there's always the next day. So, and you don't beat yourself up for it. You don't like go into this dark depression. Oh my gosh, I didn't finish this today. I'm, yeah. I mean, you just let it roll off the back and just keep going. Yeah. Well, you know, and another thing is that with, um, you know, with my book and the way that I I wrote that, you know, it was all very. Um, it was a really strict routine, daily routine, until uh, with you know. The majority of it I got done within a few months back uh, whenever I did write it. But, uh, you know, as, as a Reiki master and a dark energy healing facilitator right now, you know, with Paraflix and all of that, I uh, I'm not currently, you know, active in residential cases the way that I was. Now, if someone reaches out and needs help, I will do some long distance uh, Reiki. I will uh, I, I will do what I know to do to help. And so I think that it's just kind of a process and we go through stages in life as well, where we may be more focused on one project than another. With The Haunted Psychomania, um, that was turned into a six part series per, for Paraflix. And, you know, I have plans to open, actually open that physically in early 2022. Though it would be really great if, it, if I already had it open because then I would probably just be working from, you know, the office. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just all very exciting things. I, I, I like to keep the positive energy going and just really focus on how I can help others throughout the course of all of my work and everything just seems to kind of fall into place. And I think that's what life is about for all of us, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. you you spoke about the Reiki master. Can you explain in detail or, I mean, just what you can about what that is? I've heard of it in passing. I think I may know what it is. Um, you know, the latest thing I heard was the guy that stormed the U.S. Capitol and he was in jail and he was only eating organic food and it was because of his religion and being a Reiki master. And I think that's the latest I've heard of it. So you're making a face like that's not. That is a very interesting story. Look, you know, we put we put terms on things, right? So uh, Reiki is the same. Uh, this Reiki, Reiki, tomato, okay. tomato. Uh, one's an e Easternized, one's a, a Westernized um, pronounce pronunciation. And it's, you know, it's chi. It's 
prana. It's the unseen energy force. It's the life force. It's the God consciousness, the cosmic consciousness source. And so when you're um, when you're training and able to um, use different symbols to activate that light light source um, and bring in that light energy to help people to um, heal uh, wherever that energy needs to go in order to do that, then uh, that's basically what it is. And it's about chakra work. It's about aura mm -hmm. work. It's about our meridians and really staying balanced. So. Um, you know, that's, that's what right I'm definitely dabbling in that and working towards meditation more. I, I do meditate. Um, it is not on a cons consistent basis. I do need to do it in the morning and then at night and throughout the day for sure. I, and I notice when I do, it's a huge difference. And I, I feel more connected to the paranormal. I feel like I get more, um, dreams, uh, just, in my whole, you know, all my senses just open up for sure. And I, I just need to be more consistent with that. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you, our stories are quite different. So you, when I was reading some of your bio, um, you've literally been involved in this forever. It seems like since you were small, I didn't start doing this and getting involved until last year. I'm 40. So I started at well, I'm about to be 41. I started at 40, starting getting uh, things um, coming to me at my house. And I don't know if you know my story, but your story is quite opposite. And so tell me a little bit about your story. I know you've probably answered this and told it a hundred times, but, um, and can you, ex after you do that, can you explain to me why you think mine waited so long or why mine is happening now versus why you were, you know, had this early on? Well, first of all, you're uh, a very intelligent and amazing investigator of your work. So I I think that's incredible, you know, to only have been, um, you know, doing this type of work for that short of time and just finding your passion. Uh, you know, what is, what was, what will be, it's really all in the same. We're here in this third dimension. So we have this perception of linear time, right? And so what mm -hmm. you have to understand is that we have certain experiences and things are meant to come into, uh, I guess, in their own time uh, in this third dimension, but that it's not necessarily that you had that experience and then you, you know, end up being on a certain path necessarily. I think it's actually the other way around, which is you have these experiences because of who you are. And the more that we awaken and the more that we come to the table and understand uh, who we are, then the more things start to happen in our life, uh, people, places, things, we start to attract those, those new scenarios and experiences because they are uh, directly being attracted to us, you know, through, through those vibrational frequencies. When you really, um, you get, you know, get to a place where you can put that into perspective and really kind of operate through spirit, then you'll start to see the things around you reflect that because everything um, from within is a, is a reflection without. So when I was a child, I had a number of experiences. Uh, I had a, about a year ago, I had a childhood friend reach out to me that I hadn't spoke to in years. And she said, you know, it does not surprise me that you are where you're at and doing what you're doing because I remember so many times um, and stories that, that you used to tell me about that you had been going through. Well, one of them was pretty, uh, quite profound, honestly. And I do write about it in my book, Awaken the Higher Self, Bringing Darkness to Light. And, uh, you know, I just had this really profound spiritual experience and I pushed it away for a very long time because it was pretty dark. And I think that um, when you are a child and you don't quite have a, a full of understanding of what is going on. You may in a spiritual sense, but you're not able to correlate that and balance that through the, the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body, and the spiritual body, our four bodies, to, to be able to um, process that in a different way like I am now. So, you know, I pushed it away for many years and then mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, within the last 10 years, I've really more so 
come to the table and have just embraced it. Yeah. And embraced it and um, started to connect everything. And of course, you know, I'll receive knowledge in many different ways as well, which I, I have for a while now. Uh, it's, it's very neat. And we're, we're all a, uh, equipped and able to receive these types of spiritual mm -hmm. messages. I liken it to like a radio channel, you know, you're, yeah. you're tuning and that the signal's clear, then whatever's intended for you is going to come through. And if that's uh, staticky or unclear for whatever reason, because you're not connecting to it, to that source uh, through the heart center and the spiritual mind, then, you know, then you're, you're not able to listen and you're not able to hear those. Messages. And meditation totally helps you do that for sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So let me, let me move on to women in the paranormal. So whenever, like I said earlier, I got into this last year, last summer, it'll be a year in July. And, um, I, and I guess my, my, my perception, I guess, because of ghost adventures and ghost hunters and all of these um, TV shows, it was just mainly men. I had not seen a woman in an, a, as a paranormal investigator at that time. And the ones that I did see were Patty and she was working with um, Ghost yeah. Adventures and Zach, but she was in a different capacity, not necessarily an investigator. She was medium, psychic medium. Um, and then I got into this and started networking you know, I, I, this is a crazy saying is like, I'm going to be the first woman paranormal investigator. And as soon as I got into this, it was like, yeah, Kelly, you're not even close. There's ghost hunter girls. <laughs> yes. Like, um, nice try, but yeah, it was like, there are so many women yeah. and I, this horrible misconception that I had um, based off of just TV and them not being presented as often or as much as the men. Um, and there's so many cool chicks that do this and are really good at it and know what they're doing. And you being at the top of the list, um, I, I just, I just find it really cool that there are so many wonderful women in this field. And for the most part, the men are wonderful. They've embraced them, they protect them, they in, uh, invite them into the groups. And uh, I, I think it's a great community and it's it's a pleasure to be a part of it and to be networking with you as another woman. So tell me you know, about your, you know, we're gonna go to Texas soon or you're already yeah. in Texas. I'm going to go to Texas soon to meet you there. We are headed to the Haunted Hill House in Mineral Wells, Texas. Now, I was born and raised in Texas and Dallas. You are still there. I'm in Arkansas now, so we're going to head down there. Tell me the history behind that place. Oh, wow. So Haunted Hill House, uh, you know, it's it started out uh, in the late 1800s, and it's been a makeshift hospital. Uh, the, the founding uh, members of Mineral Wells, Texas, actually uh, own that property, and it sits around some really amazing landmarks, including some wells that uh, are now covered up, but uh, are a huge part of some of the activity that goes on there. Yeah, and in fact, yeah. jumping off of that, you know, water is a huge conduit of paranormal activity, and I know that from because I'm near Eureka Springs and Hot Springs, Arkansas, and those two have uh, large paranormal activity because of the water that yeah. is generated. Oh, yeah. Well, and it gets even even more interesting, which is that it was also a, a brothel, and it's mm -hmm. actually right next to the Baker Hotel, and there are underground tunnels that connect them. And so during the days when people with somewhat of a name would stay at the Baker Hotel, they would go through the underground tunnels to do these different activities without, you know, uh, being noticed. And this was their way of, of you know, the, the prohibition and, mm -hmm. and the brothel um, times and all of that. And so there was all a lot of eagle, illegal activities, but there was also uh, a lot of horrible things that came with that that happened there um murders and you know it's um it's quite an interesting place and even have more we've been there before 
have. And even more recently, there's been, uh, there's actually been even more murders since then. Um, some people that have lived on the property uh, recently, I think throughout the last 20 to 30 years, I would say, there's been some dark ritual that's gone on on the property mm -hmm. as well. So it's, it's, it's like these locations that we find and there's so many different layers to the history yes. that contribute. And then that energy kind of feeds off of each other and it compounds itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Molly, Miss Molly's house, Miss Molly's hotel that I went to in Fort Worth and you've been there as well. You show me a picture. I was so excited. Like, look where I'm at. Come yeah. on. Come on lunch. And so you've been there. I went to um, the Risky Steakhouse, which was an accident. I did not plan on investigating that place. And, and that's in Fort Worth as well. I drove down to the Alamo and that's coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, can you tell me what else? In have you been to those places? Miss Molly's house or Miss Molly's hotel? I know you have. Um, and then what else should I be looking for in Texas? So uh, Yorktown Memorial Hospital is a, a really great location in Texas. If you're looking for something that's not as uh, widely investigated, I would say Lavaca County Jail. Okay. And of course, you've got the Old Park Hotel. I have been there as well. Again, I've been to Miss Molly's. I, I did speak to, since it is close, I have spoken to the owner of the Risky's Steakhouse. This is actually a couple of years ago, but I never made it out there and I wish that I had. So I'm really excited to see this episode. Oh, you haven't it. seen it yet. Yes, it's coming fun. Out. Yeah. Uh, what was really cool about the Riskies is there was so much Spanish coming through on my spirit box. And, um, you know, it, it's it's really cool because sometimes when you watch some of these big names on TV and they're in, um, you know, the history is more Spanish or more Native American and everything that's coming through the spirit box is English. It's like, hmm. I know they didn't speak that much English. You know, you would have some more native languages come through. There was so much Spanish coming through it. And that validated a lot for me um, wow. at, at the time. I thought it was really, really cool. A lot of intelligent responses about prostitution and, and the murders and the babies that, um, you know, were aborted. Yeah, and down there in the Fort Worth stockyards, right? So yes. all of those locations, they have very sim similar uh, paranormal yes. behavior patterns. And the history is just wild, I think. And and the river nearby and yes. the murders that occurred and then all of the different frontier and travelers that were coming through throughout the years. I mean, there's just so much that has occurred, you know. Um, and, and it's, you know, as a history teacher, I really focus on the history behind the place because it really just creates that story. Um, it makes everything make sense. Um, and I think there's no better way to understand history than the paranormal. You know, when you read about all these facts in, in the textbook, it, it, it doesn't bring personalities. It doesn't make sense. But when you're investigating paranormal, it's like, oh, that was a person and this is their story. And um, I think it's really, really cool that that bridge there. Have you been to Arkansas before? I have. I you have. Really? I was supposed to go to the Crescent Hotel. Okay. And um, actually, Ghost Hunter Girls Midwest Division is led by Tyra Clark. Okay. And so she's been, uh, there's a place out there called the Fee House. I yes. can get you connected yes. with her if you haven't been there. Yes, it's on, it's on my list. I've got it booked for season oh, two good. of Heroclix. Yes. For season four? Two. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's a good, she's planning ahead big time. No, but, yeah, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, haunted psychomanium omnipresent. We did a, uh, part three at haunted Hill house and part okay. five is coming out, uh, at the old park hotel in Ballinger, Texas. So, okay. those, uh, those were really cool. The haunted Hill house was wild. Uh, the owner, uh, Catherine Esta, she was at towards the very end of our tour, she actually had, uh, she was in a room and the door behind her slammed on her. And of course we know like different things will happen at the same time. And it's like, boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. So right before that it had just like, the screen had completely froze. And that was the first time that that had happened that night like that. And then all of a sudden she came back in and uh, that's, she was like, oh my gosh, Natalie. and and she ran out the door and she was yelling for Sonny, which is her, her husband, the other owner of Haunted Hill House. And I said, that's 
really wild because right as this was happening right before it is when we had that really that weird interference. Well, right before mm -hmm. that, she was talking about um, a person um, whose belongings had recently been brought into that room. And she was telling a little bit of history about this person and the spirit and uh, that he had not up to this point done anything to uh, to bother them. And then it was like, okay, you want to see me bother you? So you'll have to just go watch it. It was it was quite the okay. experience. And you know, it's it is a virtual series. And we okay. did this because I I came up with this idea and I said, okay, you know, with everything going on in this world and you know, there's these lockdowns and everything, that's how this was the idea was born. And I thought, what what better way? to get some really great co-hosts um, who have like, for example, Richard Lale Lillard, you know, he's been on Ghost Adventures mm -hmm. and he's very much well known for being the gentleman psychic and yeah. he's amazing. And of course you've got Nick kind of diary. And so the two of them were just amazing co-hosts for the season. And we ended up finding some of the most incredible electronic voice phenomena throughout the, uh, throughout the season. So I'm excited. Yes. So many EVPs in the in these episodes. The Hinsdale House was a really good one too. That was part four. Okay. Well I've got a lot of watching to do. I've got my weekend cut out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll have to let me know. I think we're actually for season two, we might decide to take it on the road. So we'll see. Okay. Well you got to come to Arkansas. Yeah. Gotta, uh, I mean we can go to the Arlington, the Crescent. I mean we got all kinds of places. A lot. There's a lot of Civil War uh, battlefields here. Um, you got the Trail of Tears that ran through here. A um, lot of sad history. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about Paraflix real quick. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I was burned by a group, um, like a team, uh, probably a month before joining Paraflix or being invited to join Paraflix. So when the idea of Paraflix came, I was like, uh, yeah, I really, I just want to be by myself. I don't want to join another team or another group. I just, you know, be a loner. And, you know, I was approached and I was like, well, I'll think about it. And then I, I was like, yeah, no. And then uh, after meeting you uh, within seconds, I knew that this was the right move for me because your aura and your energy and everything that you had done prior to was so organized and well thought out. And I was like, how could I not? I mean, you are, you're very knowledgeable. You're very um, confident, but yet you don't come off cocky. You're very humble and personable. And I thought that was an amazing package to have as an owner, as someone who is running a business. And I'm just incredibly happy with Paraflix. And I sing your praises all the time. And talk oh my about gosh, it. I just love it. You know? Yes. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so tell me, it's been almost a month now um, that it has been launched. Tell me how it's doing. Is it meeting your expectations? Is it going the way you wanted to? And what's it next? Yes, you know, we launched and it's just hit the ground running. It's no less than truly incredible. It's phenomenal. When we, uh, you know, when we first came together and we formed the corporation Paraflix Inc., it was myself and Patty Negri from Ghost Adventures and Nicholas Bonani, aka Nick Haunted Diary. And Nick approached me and uh, this was after we'd started filming for Omnipresent. He said, why don't we just create our, you know, streaming service platform for our show? And I said, I said, yeah, let's do it. You know, because up until that point, you know, I'm really big about writing things down and affirmations. Mm -hmm. and, uh, for about two years, I had been writing down in my journal about this universal platform. And, you know, when you do that, things start happening and, and people, places, things come into your life and it all just kind of falls into place. And so I said, yes, this is a great idea. Let's do it. So we, uh, a couple of days later, he and I got on a meeting and I said, well, let's call it Paraflix. And he loved it. And then shortly after that, we brought Patty and we all just hit the ground running with it. But what's truly incredible is that it's almost as if 
it took a life of its own. And I know why, right. because there's nothing else out there on the market like this. No, in fact, yeah. it was it was so the idea after you know we got off of our Zoom call, the first initial meeting, and you told me about it, I read the contract, and, and just the idea behind it, the preface behind it, I thought why has this not been done before? I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, it was like one of those shark, shark tank moments. Like when someone's on Shark Tank and it's like, I could have invented that. That is so, you know, it's like, why hasn't that been invented before? But, you know, like you were saying, I think it's, it's the right person at the right time who's meant for it to happen. And I don't think anybody else could have done it the way that it's been done this way with y'all. And so I think it was the right place at the right time with the right people. Um, and that's why it hadn't been done before. Um, sure. But, I, you know, I just wish it was like, man, Shark Tank, that could have been me. <laughs> I wish I shouldn't. I wish I didn't start investigating just a freaking year ago. Yeah. But yes. Well, I, yeah. I, I, mean, I think with y'all's expertise and your, your, yeah. your management model and all of, you know, y'all are so different. You're your backgrounds and your dynamic and your personalities, but yet y'all complete each other in right. the format of it. Yeah. And, you know, we've had many meetings where we've talked about this and, you know, Patty and Nick and I, we've, we all agree. It's just very divine. It's meant mm -hmm. to be, you know, in life, sometimes we have doors that we open or things that aren't truly meant for us. It's meant to be someone else's door and then that's where you can find a lot of pushback you know you have those pendulums these mm -hmm. people places, and things that enter your life that you have to navigate through and you know what feels right versus what doesn't and i think that we have to follow by um you know by we lead by following spirit is what i mean so you know it's really just hit the ground running the ott developer has been incredible now uh, that we've launched the roku tv app is underway and we are uh we're going to be doing a a full pr uh relaunch for whenever the the every app comes out after this to kind of really keep the momentum going and it's made this incredible global reach you know producers in australia italy uk canada here recently i have had a, an amazing call with somebody in india and everyone is just so excited about this. I even spoke with 1091 Pictures. You know, they host a lot of the most major uh, mm -hmm. UFO type of film and documentary. And they're just intrigued that, uh, you know, this hasn't been done before either. So there, it's a very big, bright future. Yeah, it wasn't just me. Like, why yeah. hasn't this done before? Good. I wasn't the only one thinking that. <laughs> yeah, and a fan has named it, you know, the Netflix of the paranormal. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's really cool. And I look at this as it is, it, it is it's a universal platform, but it's, it's everybody's platform. It's not just ours, just because we created it. This is meant to be for everybody to have a part in and have a big part of that success. And it's a family, you know, even even our subscribers, you know, they're our fans. They're not just our subscribers. So it's it's a big deal. It is. And, and I and I uh, uh, right now and probably for the rest of my life, I'm going to live, breathe, eat, sleep, paraflix. So it's a cool thing. It is a really cool thing. Um, I'm excited to be a part of it. I've met so many great people. I've networked with so many people on Paraflix and watching their content and then them watching mine. Um, just, just seeing what's out there. I have so much to learn and I'm hungry for it for sure. And I'm not even close to knowing anything and everything about this. And every day I'm picking up books and reading and, and talking and, um, it's just, you just, I just can't get enough. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, I also think that, you know, it, it's not just a new era in the world. It's a new era in television. Mm -hmm. and therefore, it's a new era in the para paranormal as well in so many different levels. This will potentially change people's lives for the better. You know, we, we, we are in this full on awakening of understanding, you know, as a on a global scale 
these unseen forces, these energies that everything is energy, mm -hmm. all creation and everything, but understanding these unseen forces that though we cannot see them, you know, does not mean that they are not real. We're so used to being programmed to go off of our five senses, but in actuality, you get beyond that and you start really uh, letting in those extrasensory perceptions and your whole world changes and you know that these experiences that you have, they're all interconnected. Oh, and absolutely. It's cool. Yeah. So I think it's going to change a lot of lives. Yeah. Tell me about Texas Paracon. I'm so excited about that in August. Yeah. Um, it is right. I think I'm actually, teachers go back to work um, the first week in August, but I'm taking off half a week, even though we're back at school to do this. Cool. Um, yeah, more, because you're, you've, you've got a vendor booth. You're a vendor now at Texas Paracon, huh? Yeah. And I told you, you know, in a message, I don't have anything to sell. Um, I can sell my face on the picture and autograph it, but I will, I told you, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to create some t-shirts and stickers and just smile. Um, I, yeah. I'm doing it just to, um, once again, to network, to learn, um, right. a, a, your lineup you have at Texas Paracon is absolutely phenomenal. It is, um, I, 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 the list is forever long of the cool mm -hmm. people that you've got here with the background. Uh, I, I'm just, how, how in the world did you get that? And um, yeah, yeah it, it's just crazy. I'm so excited. Well, I was just sitting on my couch one Sunday morning, minding my business, drinking my coffee and I had this full on download to start Texas Paracon. I said, well, what the hell is Texas Paracon? I said, oh, Texas Paracon, okay. So, uh, you know, at the time I hit the ground running with it. It's been a lot of work over- I can't over imagine. Months, but you know, it got to a place where now it's just letting things sell and getting, um, continuing to, we've still got some talent coming down the line that will be announced, but it really is incredible. It's going to be at the Dallas Convention Center um, mm -hmm. August 13th and 14th of this year. It is connected to the Omni Dallas Hotel. So that's where the hotel room block is for all of the talent. And I think that's very convenient. You know, I wanted to make sure they had the red carpet treatment. And there's a uh, 100,000 square foot exhibit hall as well as a main arena stage. So in the exhibit hall, there's gonna be three secondary stages with G Crew, Paranormal Warehouse and the Odyssey Files Radio. Then we're gonna have all of the vendor booths set up throughout the exhibit hall. Uh, there will be concessions. It's going to just be like a really fun Comic-Con with a, the Paranormal UFO twist. And then you've got the main arena stage. And so that's where a lot of the main lectures will be given. And a lot of people will um, will be in there watching the lectures. And then there will be people mingling throughout the exhibit hall. And it's going to just continue to go for nine hours a day, both on the 13th and uh, the 14th. And then um, what's going to be really great about this is, again, like I said, there's more talent being announced. But we've got the Holzer Files. Uh, Shane Pittman, Cindy Caza, Dave mm -hmm. Schreiber, all the ghost hunters. I have so much respect for everybody who's going to be there, and it's it's really exciting. Um, Patty Negri, of course, is going to be there. Father Sebastian, who's now an executive in mm -hmm. Netflix, uh, Father Sebastian will be there. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, we've got all of the mountain monsters. So you can find the full talent lineup because I would probably like take up an hour. <laughs> I, I would list them. In, I mean, I'm going to list all your links in the description box, obviously. Oh, great. Yeah. And so you're going to have stuff about cryptids, about UFOs, about the paranormal. So you've got everything covered. I mean, for, yes. for all of it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, and you know, last year there were so many events that were canceled, um, you know, we were, I had so many different events that I was headed to, uh, the UFO con, MN Perry Unity, and there was, uh, there was one out, at, oh, San Diego Paranormal Con got canceled that I was headed to, and others, and it just was like, boom, 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 boom. I was so excited last year. I had, mm -hmm. like, 
I finally get to travel. It's going to be this. And, you know, we, we just can never predict what's going to happen and you just take it day by day and you, you do the best that you can do. So now that all of these events are, are uh, looking like they're back in action, you know, let's just make the most of it. And I'm, um, I started U.S. Paracon as well. So what I decided was uh, U.S. Paracon was born after Texas Paracon, but it made sense. So I yes. did because first stop is Dallas, Texas Paracon. And then next year, who knows? Next year, it's off to the world, you know, just <laughs> I have never been to a we'll, Comic -Con. Take, we'll take the second annual uh, U.S. Paracon to um I don't know. What do you think, Kelly? Well, Las Vegas is already taken. Um, we could go to Chicago, New York, Miami. Um, I don't know. I mean, let's Oklahoma City would be really cool. Um, I just recently found out uh, that I'll be going to the or um, Orange County. Paracon, that will be a first annual. It's never been done, so that's going to be this year. And then the second virtual uh, Vulture City Paracon. I'll so Orange County is where the wives are at, right? The yeah. Okay. See, I don't even want. I just know Orange County. That's like Hollywood type stuff, right? Right, right. Oh, I think yeah. it's right around that area. So, so I have not been to a Paracon. I've not been to a Comic Con. So I'm going to be like um, absorbing all of it and fangirling over everyone that I'm there. I'm going to try not to pee my pants and cry and go, oh, my God, because I just met. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> For it's sure. going to be a great time. You know, my hope yeah. is that everybody who comes and uh, plays a part and enjoys the experience that they leave just inspired like learning something new or just having a, a life-changing you know experience something that they'll always remember and i think there is no way small. you could go there with your lineup and not i mean you're gonna you're gonna probably be information overload and spiritually awakened beyond your, your <laughs> world. It's a, a, imagination with the people that you've got if you don't come out of there a new person, then there's something wrong with you, um, for sure. Because yeah. there's, there's no way you could could not. And there's so many different ticket levels too. Like you, there's a day pass or the two day pass, and then there's two other levels after that. It's structured very much the same as Alien Con, uh, 2019 in Dallas. So I think that people will find if they uh, if they go on the website at texasparacon.com that there's different sponsorship levels. You can get a vendor booth, check out the entire talent lineup, and then see all of those different ticket levels as well. I'm excited. Yeah. August can't get here soon enough, but we have, what, two weeks to our Haunted Hill investigation. It's uh, Kelly's Unexplained meets Ghost Hunter Girls. Yes. It was funny. There was a question that... Um, <sighs> Our Haunted Lives, the talk show, because um, I was on their show not too long ago. It's He has not released that episode yet on Paraflix. I think I'm coming out in a couple weeks. But there was a question that he asked me, and your name came up. But he said, um, he said, is there, is there been any place that you have been super scared, that you've been frightened, that you were totally like, oh, my gosh, and I had to think for a second and I was like, no, there really hasn't been a place that I've been like super scared of or just overtaken. And he goes, you know who you remind me of? You remind me of Natalie. That's what she said too when we yeah. asked her that. And I said, well, that, what a what a compliment. She's they said that no, it's really not been a yeah. place. You know, I, I don't I, I obviously I'm I understand there's negative energy and I, res I respect the power of it. Um, I'm not, I know that I'm powerful as well. And I know I, I protect and I cleanse and I do the things that I need to do. Um, but there hasn't been anything. I just feel really confident in who I am and my yeah. abilities that if you go in there scared or apprehensive or 
not sure of yourself, they are going to jump all over it. And I think me and you or you and I have this natural confidence, but it's, it's not overbearing. It's just, we are, we know who we are. And, um, and I think that's what draws. That's why I have not been to an investigation site where I've not found evidence. There are some people that go and they don't get anything. And it's, I think we're open to that. They understand our aura is a color where they understand, Hey, these girls are the real deal that they, they understand me. They, they see me, I'm going to communicate with them and I'm, I'm not scared yet. Now with this haunted Hill house, what you just said, it sounds pretty legit. Well, speaking of that and the haunted Hill house, uh, the owner of the haunted Hill house, I uh, did, uh, on the static cameras, there was audio that came through from a spirit that said, you, you cannot touch her. She's protected. You know, speaking of oh, okay, good. Well, pretty, pretty interesting. I've had things that have happened along the way to, you know, confirm that including personal experiences. Mm -hmm. But yes, I, you know, I have kind of like a foreordination and a certain high level of protection because of who I am. And no, I don't fear. Uh, I would say I'm on high alert. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. If something happens, like I run towards it or I need to figure out exactly. Right. I have never that, screamed that, that or it, run away. It can be yeah. explained first, you know, and, and you, there's no time to waste in that moment. It's like the, it's like that that uh, switch flips and it's a natural part of, of what we do in, in that moment. And it's uh, it's interesting, you know, and I, I do thrive the most in the face of, of the the darker stuff. And that's why I'm a dark energy healing facilitator and able to be very effective in helping people deal with certain things. You know, there's four different types of, of dark energy, um, I guess, categories, if you would want to call them. I mean, you have your general dark influence and then you have attachments and then you have attachments to the point of what I guess, you know, we like to put terms on things, but I guess if you want to say possession, then that would be a term to use. And then, you know, then the fourth category would be walk-ins where, you know, a spirit may walk in or come into your, your being and, or you have lost time or you're, you know, something happens to you during that, that walk-in, depending on what type of energy it is, it doesn't necessarily have to be a dark energy, but, uh, nonetheless then you know you have to have those those walk-ins and those are are pretty um that can be pretty intense and i've never had a walk-in i've never been scratched i've never been pushed i have never been i can feel them observing me mm -hmm. um you know sometimes it's it's it does kind of make you kind of be in that moment and say okay i'm going to really be aware and feel what's going on right now because it is so intense but yeah i mean all in all i just i do this because i truly am here to help in the ways that that, that i know how and and also to help shed light upon everything you know yeah, you you accept it, you you yeah. respect it, you understand that it's real, but you're not going to let it influence you, take over you, scare you. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's how I look at it too. It's kind of like, and this is what I told David, um, is it's kind of like riding a horse. It, they can sense your energy, they can sense your fear, and they will take, they'll buck you off, they'll take over you, they'll stomp you if they feel that you're scared and you can't, you've got to be alpha in, in all ways. As soon as you get on that horse, you got to let them know who's boss. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, how, one more question before we go. It's been a, a 45 minutes. Tell me about, if you can give me a percentage, because this is my understanding, um, that most of the paranormal that we encounter as investigators is not negative. It's not demonic because when people say, oh, you're a paranormal investigator, aren't you scared? And it's like, no, most of the, the paranormal, the ghosts that we encounter are not demonic. I would say um, less than 10% of the things that we encounter are demonic. Is that something that you found to be true? Or do you find that that percentages more or because to me, like I said, I've only been doing this a year, but to me, I think it's just spirits that haven't crossed over that are just 
um, intrigued by you, that just want to communicate with you, that just want to be seen and heard and just acknowledged and appreciated, but that that not out there to haunt you or to yeah. just take over. <laughs> Well, look, there's many different types of energies and many different types of beings. And so, and again, we like to put terms on, on things. I think that's where people get caught up in, in, um, that really dark activity, you know, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be a demon or a devil. So, you know, I like to just say, you know, I liken it to like this, like you have this line and below that line is lower vibrational energy. And above that line is higher vibrational energy. And in those levels, you have many different types of, of beings and, and spirits. And you also have spirits who are, are evil. Um, and that's why they're stuck because, uh, you know, if they did something, if they're, you know, not able to continue to go through. And so, yeah, so there, so as far as a perspective percentage, I would just say that, um, uh, personal, Personally, my experience, Kelly, is that I I go by what I what I feel, and I know what that feeling feels like. Mm -hmm. And yep. it's I've only felt it at certain locations that I've been to, um, and also in re residential cases a, a couple of times. So most of the time, it is just like what we would think um, a soul or a spirit yeah. or someone who's stuck and all of that. And then of course, you know, some of it's residual and some of it's intelligent. So it's, it's just about kind of going through the process, but really uh, knowing what that feels like and relying on, on that sixth sense to know if there's something like that, that's really present or not. Good answer. Yeah. Well, thank you, my friend. Okay, guys, we are headed out. Um, I really appreciate Natalie for coming and all of her links will be in the description box. So um, Natalie, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. The pleasure has been all mine. It's been so fun tonight. And Haunted Hill House is only in a couple of weeks. So we've weeks, got- May 7th, forward. correct? Yeah. May 7th. All right. So uh, will we see you later, guys? Love you and bye. bye. <laughs>